here we are at the airport about to travel to Gravel Nationals in Tasmania. A few days out from the event, let's get travelling. There are no direct flights from Adelaide to Tasmania, so we have to go into Melbourne first and then on to Launceston. Let's just hope our bikes arrive at the same time as we do. So we've arrived in Launceston, all the bags have arrived, we'll just check them before we get in the car and drive to Derby. Um, oh, <laughs> it looks alright but the, the, <laughs> the powder has exploded across the whole of the frame so it's going to need a bit of a clean. We've arrived at our accommodation in Derby, Tasmania. We are now going to get all the bikes ready, ready for the race on Saturday and get out on the course and check out what the gravel conditions are like. This will help prepare me for what I'll need to wear on Saturday. So we went out on the course this morning and wrecked the start. Um, the gravel is in really good condition at the moment. We have had a lot of rain and we are predicted to get some more rain before a race on Saturday. So it's really important to check out as much of the course as you can so you can anticipate areas like this where it's going to be single file. Oh man! <laughs> So here we are, deep into Tasmania's rainforest. Beautiful scenery, absolutely stunning, but obviously being a gravel event, there's going to be lots of uphill, and here we are. We are due to get some more rain before the race on Saturday. I found it really important to get out on the course to see what the terrain is like and what the weather's going to be like. It was particularly cold today. I think we had a high of about five degrees and now it's raining, that could potentially make the even colder on Saturday. So we're out wrecking the course in the car today. Um, it's been raining all night for some 14 hours straight. So we're checking out the course in the car and not on the bikes today, so the bike can stay in the best possible conditions for the race tomorrow. And of course, in true Tassie fashion, there is a tree down. We've just driven up the middle climb, Ralph Falls. Uh, it's quite a nice steady gradient until you get towards the top. And then it gets a bit steeper. It's very loose there in sections and it's very, very wet. for a spin on the bike before the event tomorrow. It's now quite wet and muddy outside. We've had a lot of rain. It finally stopped raining, so I took the opportunity to get out. And now lining up to register for the event tomorrow. So now I'm all signed on, have my number and my time chip. I'll get back to the house, uh, put this on the bike, change the chain over and give it a wash over before we race tomorrow. So we lined up in our age group order and then we had a countdown and the whistle went and we set off across the bridge up the first bitumen climb before we turned right onto the gravel. The pace was already pretty hot at that point. The front bunch had turned the corner before I'd got there. So I chased as, as long as I could until we got to the bottom of the mutual valley climb. But it was it was been bits by then already. The first climb uh, coming out of Derby is the Mutual Valley climb. It was quite a difficult climb. It wasn't overly so, but I found myself climbing with uh, a friend for a while. And it was just trying to get into a rhythm and just get to the top as soon as you could because I was getting quite warm at that point, which is strange, but I was feeling quite warm. 
The descent coming off the first climb was just trying to focus, um, keep pushing the pedals over as hard as I could, keep eating and, and drinking to keep the energy levels up. One course left. The second climb, uh, Ralph Falls, I had driven with Phil in the car the previous day, so I kind of knew what to expect, but I wasn't prepared for how painful it was going to be. The bottom of the climb was absolutely stunning, so beautiful, and I was being yo-yoed with a few other riders on the way up and being caught and passed by a few others. Just the top was just uh, so insanely beautiful, but increasingly painful in my, in my lower back. I found the top really difficult. It was just a really long climb to get to the top of, and, and then when you get to the top, it just keeps going again and again and again. Thank you. Coming off the top of Ralph Falls, I was happier descending than I was previously, thanks to some skill sessions I'd had prior to the event. Um, it was quite tricky in sections, rocky, um, but wasn't really loose or slippery. Um, but I, was, I wasn't scared or anything, but then again, it was just kind of trundling along, just trying to keep the pedals going, keep the bike moving. After Ralph Falls, after the descent, and then we were on to some lower valley sections. I knew the third and final climb was coming, but before the climb, we had the portal section where we had to dismount and walk around the massive sinkhole in the road. That was quite interesting because I was trying to sling my leg over the bike and I was, I was like, ooh, that was quite sore. My friend caught me back up at that point and she said, here we go, this is the start of the final QOM and it was absolutely brutal, but it wasn't particularly long. Well, the, the bit that my hammerhead was recording wasn't very long, but when you got to the top of that one, there was another bit and it, <clears throat> it got worse and worse as you got up to the top and my back was just screaming and screaming. At the top of the final climb, um, there's a section that's on along the top of a plateau. And I didn't anticipate how windy it would be and it was quite a bit cooler up there. We had pretty much a headwind and I was chatting along to another gentleman there, the first time he'd been here as well. So that was quite nice just to take the mind off the fact that it was, I think it was quite a long plateau section. I think I remember seeing about 10 kilometres of just kind of undulations with wind gusting at you. I was really happy with how I fueled for today's race. I got a little tip from a friend in Adelaide about some Turkish delights so I used those at the top of the second and the third climb and they were like my little golden nugget to get me to the finish and then that I was using gels and a hydration mix in my bottles and just had water in the bladder on my back and um, that was really good I did stop at the final water stop to top up and grab a few lollies and shove them in my mouth but I don't think I really needed them. The hardest part of the race was the final climb, the unnamed climb of hell, I think it's called, was really quite brutal. And I was just trying to stop myself from hurting so much and just kind of keeping the self-talk and self-doubt going. So just keep keep the pedals turning, you've just got to get to the top of here, then it's, it's downhill, but it wasn't. <laughs> but yeah, really pleased with how I managed to just keep the pedals turning over. The best bit, probably the descent coming off the plateau down into Ringarooma. It was a tarmac descent and it was just so beautiful. You could see for a long way and there was mist in the valley and the sun was glistening off the pools of water. That was really, really, really quite beautiful. So overall, within the race, I was sixth in my age group. I was at 105 kilometers, 2,300 meters of climbing, and 494 TSSs. That includes a short commute back to Derby, but I'm very, very tired now. I really enjoyed this event, even though I am absolutely shattered. It's a stunning part of the country to ride in. I, I do recommend the event. You don't have to be an off cycling member to do the race. You just come and support the people, the local people here and the businesses that support the event. And yeah, I think I would, I think I would come back, but probably not for a couple of years. <laughs> If you have any questions about the National Gravel Championships or gravel events in general, please leave a comment below or drop us a message. This is the last episode in our gravel series. If there's anything else you'd like to know about, about racing and training, please let us know in the comments below or send us a message. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and the series about gravel racing.